but there was no real financial plan here to establish a currency in New Zealand by governors. And we know, for example, that the Union Bank of Australia arrived here in 1840, which didn't have the ability to issue script. And then the Colonial Bank started up, which started issuing script, but that was very limited and unsuccessful. And so by 1860, there were really only two banks here, the Union Bank of Australia and also the Oriental Bank, which Falcon and Likeworthy had set up. But that bank was soon sold to the Bank of New South Wales, which just left the two banks, the Union Bank of Australia and the Bank of New South Wales. And in 1861, the Bank of New Zealand was set up. And so let's have a look at the establishment of the Bank of New Zealand here. Now that the capital of New Zealand was in Auckland, the Maori War broke out in 1860 in Taranaki as a consequence of the government taking possession of land which the Marys contended they had not sold to the Crown. The government's legal advisor, Mr Whitaker, being Attorney General, held that the Crown had acquired title. But Sir George Grey, who had hurriedly been sent back to New Zealand as Governor upon the outbreak of war, made inquiry into the matter after his arrival in New Plymouth, and the documents and plans produced showed that the legal advice on which the government had acted was definitely bad, and the Marys were right, and so the governor handed the original land in dispute back to the Marys, even though soldiers confiscated more land in Taranaki after that period. And meanwhile, Mr Frederick Whitaker, who was at the heart of the controversy to do with the Mary Wars, in 1861 formed the partnership with Mr Thomas Russell, who was a young man of 30 years at the time, of humble beginnings, but who had extensive networks throughout the Auckland community. And Mr Russell promised Mr Whitaker, his senior partner, £5,000 per year as a salary, and that's because the firm was involved in conveyancing and money lending there in the Auckland area. And also in 1861, Thomas Russell entered colonial politics, and in 1862, under the Alfred Domet administration, he became the Minister of Defence. And also in 1861, Thomas Russell formed a partnership with Falconer Likeworthy, who had been the manager of the Oriental Bank, to form the Bank of New Zealand, the BNZ. And halfway through 1862, Falconer Likeworthy sailed all the way back to the City of London, where he originally came from as agent for the Oriental Bank, and he did so for the express purpose of setting up a headquarters there for the Bank of New Zealand, which he did at Mansion House, 1 Victoria Street there, right in the heart of the CBD. And across the road is the privately owned Bank of England, and also the Royal Exchange. And so let's have a look now at the private ownership of the Bank of England, as described by this English gentleman. Bank of England here. And it even says here, on this pyramid thing, it says, it says, close to the pa this panel is the Royal Exchange, which contains a new retail development, Mansion House, the official home of the Lord Mayor of London during his year in office, and the Bank of England, founded in 1694 as a private company, is now exercising the functions of a state bank. It says it here close to it. It's here, where my finger is. Bank of England, founded in 1694 as a private company, founded as a private company and now exercising the functions of a state bank. It doesn't say it's a government owned state bank. It clearly says in black and white Founded in 1694 as a private company and now exercising the functions of a state bank. That is a private company that issues notes that are worthless bits of paper and that are backed up by nothing. And so in October of 1863, Mr Frederick Whitaker became the Premier of New Zealand. And he joined in government there in Auckland, his business partner, Mr Thomas Russell, who was already the Minister of Defence at that time, and so the control of the operations and finance to do with the Maori Wars was firmly in the hands of the partners of Whitaker Russell there in Auckland. And the relationship between the government and the BNZ meant that the government would open up 
a bank account with the BNZ at that time, and then it authorised the raising of a three million pound loan in order to cover the costs of deploying the troops out here in New Zealand in order to confiscate the land from the Maoris. And so this was the beginning of our government debt to the international bankers way back there during this period. And even today we're misled about this debt. We're told that this debt belongs to the banks in Australia. The big Australian-owned banks in New Zealand posting a combined $4.6 billion profit. And so that $4.6 billion didn't actually go back to the Australian banks at all because the Australian banks are privately owned by the Jewish international bankers, just like the banks are here in New Zealand. And for example, when we look at the shareholding of the ANZ and the Westpac and the BNZ, we see that the three major shareholders are the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, also JP Morgan Chase, and also Citigroup. And there are other minor shareholders there, such as the UBS in Switzerland, and also the Deutsche Bank from Germany, which helped fund Adolf Hitler during the Second World War. And so the owners of these banks are Jewish and they're international bankers who are not there to help the people of the world or the people of New Zealand. And this all goes back to the Mary Walls in New Zealand. And in 1869, Julius Vogel became the colonial treasurer. And in 1873, he became the premier of New Zealand. And in 1874, Julius Vogel and Thomas Russell travelled together all the way back to London to raise another four million pounds. And two million of those pounds was placed as a deposit with the BNZ, which then allowed that bank to lend out three times more than that under fractional reserve banking. And the other two million was the beginning of public works expenditure here in New Zealand. And so we know that Julius Vogel then began selling this confiscated land from the Marius to people like Thomas Russell. And Thomas Russell went out and bought 80,000 acres there at the Piako block. And then to the south, he bought 250,000 acres of the Padateri block. And to the east, he bought 150,000 acres in the Thames Valley block. And so this was the beginning of the sale of the confiscated land to this private group of bankers and friends of bankers. And so this is what Sir George Grey had to say about it when he was in Parliament. Thank you. 